Right, um, when I was making these here um, inner clutch housings, um, the drawing calls for a thread on the outside here of half inch by 32. Now then, I haven't got any taps or dies um, with that sort of thread. But then I thought, well, why does this section need to be so thick? And uh, I happened to have an M10 die, which is the largest die I have. And I thought, well, I could make that M10 and just make a little lock nut to go on the back. Make this thing M10 just the same and jobs are good. Un. Or so I thought. The idea is that this feeds from the front like rather difficult to do one handed like this you see but also you've got this affair that goes this little uh, shaft that goes through the clutch housing and then rotates on the inside if you can uh, just visualize that now then the um, the crank on the end there the diameter of that is bigger than the hole in an M10 nut now then, what this means is, uh, me thinking of being a smart ass, uh, it means it's all gone wrong because you can't get this through the nuts, so to speak. So, in, this, in effect, you can't assemble the bloody thing. Now then, um, I didn't want to remachine these from scratch because um, this little uh, bore here, which contains a clutch, takes quite a bit of doing and there was nothing wrong with that part of it so I thought well how do I get back to a decent uh, required diameter for the half inch 32 so the uh, the idea I've come up with is I've got some like that one, a couple of steel M10 nuts and what I'm going to do, if I can do this one handed, these M10 nuts on here, tighten them down with a bit of uh, bearing retainer and then machine them back to half inch and uh, that will allow me to uh, take them back to as designed um, and then I can what I'm going to do rather than buying a, uh, an expensive die I'll do what I should in the first place in, uh, and cut the threads on the lathe uh, which is basically what I've done over here on the, on, on the first one. There, look. Oop, let's get it focused. Hang on a minute. There we go. So that's had two nuts put back on and then uh, turned down to half inch and then thread cut half inch 32. What I'm doing at the moment is uh, is doing the same uh, with a, a nut, a steel nut, which will act as a lock nut. Uh, so the moral of the story is, don't try to be a smart ass without studying the drawing properly and working things out in advance, because it uh, it comes back and bites you.
Okay, I've made all the parts for the uh, drive mechanism for the lubricator and just to start the assembly what we've got is the main shaft here um, which has got a crank on the end which will eventually drive the pump inside the um, lubricator box. Okay, so that sits in there. This threaded portion will then be fastened in that half inch hole there in the uh, box itself with the with this nut on the back so this portion of the clutch will be held rigid within the uh, assembly of the box okay now what happens is I'm gonna to have to do some of this um, off camera and then just come back to it but basically you've got a, a cam in there with some hardened steel rollers the clutch itself the, the clutch body is made from um, silver steel unhardened which is pretty tough stuff any road it's a very fiddly job as you can probably see so just to give you an idea of how it works um, Behind the roller, bloody magnetic pointer. In the gap behind the roller, there will be a spring, and same on the other side. So the idea is when this shaft turns, when it turns in this direction, um, the springs are compressed which allow the whole shaft to rotate within the housing. Now then going the other way, you can see there, if I turn it the other direction, even without the springs, the, the rollers are forced against the cam and the whole thing locks up and will turn, or, or should I say that the, the shaft will not turn then within this housing. Um, on the other clutch here, uh, similar situations, another cam, another pair of rollers and pair of springs and along with this spacer, which will go on there like that, um, that, that space has also got a groove in it there to allow you to get some uh, lubricating oil in there, although it doesn't need a great deal. Uh, so you've got another cam in this half that will sit on there like that and the idea being that when the locomotive drive turns this clutch here that grips and turns the crank the crank in turn then uh, drives the pump now when the locomotive um, arm moves back this clutch locks up and this clutch frees off so in effect the the loco can return the stroke like that without moving the crank any until the next stroke and then on the next oscillation the crank moves and then return it stays um, stationary and so on and so forth so in effect what's happening on every oscillation of this outer clutch the um, the crank is continuously, um, well, it, it's alternating between movement and non-movement, but it is continually moving in the same direction. So the pump is always actuating, if you like. There's no, there's no free play in the pump. So that's the idea. So off camera, I'll uh, I'll assemble the whole thing together, and uh, we'll see how it uh, turns out. Right, we've assembled the. Um, drive mechanism up into the uh, oiler box okay um, one thing I didn't show you on the previous parts was making this handle here this uh, primer which is basically a, a manual handle um, for the operator or driver whatever um, to prime the locomotive with oil what that allows you to do is because it doesn't act on this outer clutch it's, it's only directed 
directly fastened to the, the central shaft. It means you can turn that clockwise as far as you like. Therefore, actuating the pump and priming the, uh, the system with oil. It will not come back the other way. As you can see, no, it's just not coming. So that's how that works. The locomotive will have um, a rod attached by these two 10BA um, holes, which will fit in that gap there. And that will oscillate um, independent of this handle. So the locomotive is not driving the shaft, it's driving the outer clutch. And the way that will work, if I can just, uh, my fat fingers will allow it. So it'll one way and then back. I don't know whether you can see that, but it's, if you actuate the clutch, backwards and forwards and you can see the crank moving with no um, return because both clutches are working together to give you that movement and that's it for the uh, drive mechanism uh, it's quite interesting really I enjoyed making them um, so yeah I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it was actually, especially with the profile of the, the cams. Um, but uh, I made one, got that to work, and then I just drew around that on the other bits of steel to, uh, you know, just to uh, give us the shape and then uh, cut them out to suit. And then uh, polished them until they, they worked freely in the in the housing. And uh, yeah, jobs are good. Um, quite cleverly, the, the designer of this. Um, locomotive he came up with this uh, oiler design whereby the clutches are kept separate from the steam oil um, I've read up articles where this type of clutch doesn't work too well with steam oil because that's a very thick and uh, viscous um, lubricant it can stop these clutches from working properly i.e. The, the rollers don't bite so well on the clutch on on the return so they can slip um, now ordinary lightweight lubricated, lubricated oil is fine but steam oil is a problem but quite cleverly what he's done here is he's made a separate compartment to contain the clutches um, which prevents the steam oil going anywhere near them so that's quite good uh, so yeah I'll get the other one built up and, and then it'll be on with the pumps the pump side of it which will um, actuate off this crank the pump will work in here and will outlet somewhere on this wall here and, and on the opposite hand on the other one to feed the cylinders with oil okay